you may notice that right after that conference, he basically walked across the street, went over to St. John's Church, which is a very historically important church. It is a church that literally every president since James Madison has worshipped at. That's how old this church is. It has a lot of historic significance. And it was attacked and set ablaze the other night. The basement was actually on fire. I don't know exactly how they put that out, but thankfully it didn't seem like it had done way too much damage. But still, a church was literally burned. I mean, it again, it's ironic. I was saying this the other day. The very people that would have been furious, rightfully so, at something like the 16th Street Church bombing, that that was the rallying cry for the civil rights movement. The people that now claim to be the progeny, the, uh, the, the final form of the civil rights movement, are doing exactly the same thing that the civil rights movement stood against. Burning churches. That's what they're engaged in right now. They're doing the very thing that they claim to be against. But nonetheless, that's, that's where we were. And so... They were burning the church the other day, and President Trump goes off, and he says a few words and is, has a picture taken of him in front of the church wearing a Bible. Or, sorry, wearing a Bible. Holding up a Bible. Basically saying, look, this has got to stop. And he's right. I mean, some critics have brought up that President Trump has a lot of moral failings, and because of that, he basically doesn't have the right to use the Bible or the, the church to stand on. Look, you want to criticize the president's moral failings. I think that's fair game. I've done it myself quite a bit, actually. I did it with Barack Obama. I did it with George W. Bush. Criticizing a president's moral failings, especially when they start talking about issues of religion, if you think that they're being hypocritical, if you think that they're doing things that are inconsistent, that's fair game. It's okay to talk about that. What I think is not okay to talk about, what I think is incorrect when his, criti when his critics have brought this up, is saying that he shouldn't have said anything, he shouldn't have done anything at all. Look, even if President Trump were an atheist and thought, oh, all this Jesus stuff is just ridiculous and I don't see how anyone can believe that, let's just say that that's who President Trump was. Not just somebody that's, let's say, not exactly super Christian or living a life like Christ, somebody that was full-on atheist. I still wouldn't have a problem with him standing in front of the church and saying, look, this stuff has to stop. As a Christian person, if the mosque in Montgomery or a Jewish synagogue had been burned and I were in a position of authority, I would not hesitate at all to stand in front of it and go, all right, this stuff has to stop. And then the Jew, if, if there were Jews coming out or Muslims coming out, they were critical of me for doing that. I was like, yeah, but he eats pork. What? So? The fact that President Trump was willing to stand in solidarity with Christians, even though he, you don't have to be morally perfect to be able to say it's not right that people are burning churches. And not only is Trump imperfect, he's way far from perfect when it comes to morals. I'm not sticking up for the man's moral track record at all. I'm not one of these people that says, well, I'm not electing a priest, I'm not electing a preacher. I think that's a dumb argument. I think that morality actually does make a difference when you're choosing a leader, but this is not what we're talking about right now. They're being critical of the president for standing in solidarity with Christians and saying that it's not right that people burn churches. They're saying that he shouldn't be allowed to comment on that because the guy is not the most Christ-like person in the world. Like that's insane. That's absolutely ridiculous. And I don't understand how people can sit there and say that with a straight face. Because here's the thing, that's a, that's a totally appropriate message for a, anybody in a leadership position. The mayor of D.C., if it had been Dianne Feinstein or Nancy Pelosi that had gone out there, uh, big abortion supporters, you can't possibly come up with a policy that is more anti-Christian than being in favor of abortion. If they had stood out in front of the church and said, look, this has got to stop, I'd say, okay, they were right. That, that's all that you need. They can do that. I may not agree with them on I may not agree with them on what being a Christian means. I may not agree with them philosophically. I may not agree with them politically. 
but I could stand with Nancy Pelosi or Elizabeth Warren or, or any of the, the pro-abortion, death-worshipping cult that is the Democrat Party when it comes to abortion. With any of them that are saying, yeah, people shouldn't burn churches, okay, I, I stand with you on that one. Just like Abraham Lincoln, I will stand with any man when he is right. That's a quote from Abraham Lincoln. And so I, I don't understand the criticism on those grounds. But I think the, the big irony in all of this is that now the media has gone from saying, oh, church is non-essential. You, the, the risk of the coronavirus, it's just too big. We should shut down churches and we should keep them shut down. We have people like Mayor Bill de Blasio that are saying that you're going to permanently shut down churches if they even think about opening before the shutdown ends. Uh, people saying that you're not going to be allowed to go back to church for another 18 months. That There are mayors across the country that have actually said that. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Democrats telling you that church is basically just this thing that you don't have to do. It's not important. Don't worry about it. It's a non-essential function. We just can just brush it under the rug because it's a non-essential activity. And then the second President Trump goes out to defend a church. How dare he? This is sacred. Is nothing sacred? He's using it as a backdrop to enhance his political career to rally the base. Shut up. Look, either a church is sacred or it is not sacred. And I'm not talking about the building itself. I'm talking about the institution. Either religion is something that is important, that means something to people, or it isn't. You can't have it both ways. You can't criticize the president for his own moral shortcomings, which are abundant and many, and saying that he shouldn't do that because church is something that's sacred and should be taken seriously, and then also tell me that, yeah, we're just going to not do church for 18 months. And if you do want to do church, if you disagree with the time span with which we believe that church should be shut down, you're an evil, hateful bigot that just hates old people and wants them to die. No, I'm not going to accept that. Those two things cannot be true at the same time. Pick one. And I know that the reason that they can't pick one, I know that the reason they're actually inconsistent is because they never believed it in the first place. They've always hated church. They've always hated Christians. There is a seething animosity towards a biblical worldview by many, I won't say all, but many in the Democrat Party. I mean, they just recently kicked out a couple of Democrats that were pro-life that were pro-life because they were Christians. And so this idea that that's something to be respected and, and you can't do that and, and this is something that is so important when all of a sudden it fits your narrative, I'm not buying into that. I'm sorry. It doesn't hold any water with me. You want to criticize the president on moral grounds? Okay, I might even join in. You, you may come up with a good point. But you want to do so specifically saying he's not even allowed to stand in solidarity with Christians and say it's not right that they're burning churches now because you think that the guy, you know, has a pretty crappy record when it comes to things like marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and, and a whole litany of other sins? No, I don't, I don't buy that. I can't buy into your criticism of that. I, I just won't do it. I have absolutely no reason to believe there is even an ounce of sincerity in you when you do that. <laughs> So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.